Thank you. My name is Gil McGowan and I have the honor of serving as the elected president for Alberta's largest worker organization, the Alberta Federation of Labor. I was first elected in 2005 and my tenure in this position has corresponded with the rise and abuse of the temporary foreign worker program. And I want to tell you a little bit about, uh, tell you a little story about how the rise and abuse of this program has affected and shaped the labor movement here in Alberta and my tenure as president. So I was elected in 2005 and within the first year of my presidency, we started to receive dozens and dozens of calls and complaints from two groups. First, we heard from our own members working in places like Fort McMurray that workplaces were starting to get flooded by migrant workers who were in some cases not properly trained for the job, who in almost, almost all cases were getting paid less than our members on those work sites. And we started hearing from our members, what are we gonna do about these foreigners? And I'm just gonna be blunt about that. That's what we heard. But at the same time, because we are, in a worker, we are a worker advocacy organization, we started getting calls from the migrant workers themselves, talking about the abuse, talking about promises that had been made to them by employers and by, and by the agents that had brought them to this country, promises that had been broken about how much they get paid. We got complaints about how they were living in substandard conditions. And so we as a labor movement, we had a decision to make. We had a decision to make. We were hearing these calls from our members who were worried and we were hearing these calls from migrant workers who were being abused. And we had to make a decision about how to deal with this situation which was rapidly growing and getting out of hand. And I'm proud today, looking back 15 years, we made the right decision because we called all of our presidents together from both the public and private sector unions and we put together a statement that has guided our actions on these issues ever since. And I won't try to repeat the whole statement, but I'll tell you in principle what it said. It said first, it said that if we are bringing people to this country to work in our industries, to work on our construction sites, to work in our, our retail outlets, to work in the service sector, if those workers are good enough to work here they are good enough to stay. The statement went on to say that we understood what was going on. And what we understood then and what we understood now is that a country that relies on a large and growing group of vulnerable and exploitive guest workers is a country that is creating an exploitable underclass by design. And that, that fact, that exploitation is bad, not just for the workers who are being exploited, but it's bad for everyone in the labor market because what was happening then, and frankly, what is continuing to happen now is that by design through government, we are creating this situation where workers who are brought over as temporary foreign workers uh, and as guest workers are being used as pawns to drive down wages and conditions for everyone. And we called that out and stood against it. And finally, and most importantly, what we said in that statement, and I remind you, this is the statement that continues to guide the work of the Federation of Labor in this province on these issues. We said most importantly, that when we're talking about migrant workers in our province and in our country, they are, they are our brothers and sisters because a worker is a worker is a worker. And that has guided us in our work. So I'm, I'm very proud that we took that statement and at the time, my grantee hadn't even become an organization that was active in, in the province. But we said we have to do more than just talk. And we actually pooled our resources as a labor movement and we created what at the time we called the, the Office of the Temporary Foreign Worker Advocate. We hired a full-time labor lawyer 
and her job was to help migrant workers find paths to permanent residency. And she helped thousands, thousands of migrant workers find their way to Canadian citizenship. And I look back at the 18 years that I've been president, and I, I can't think of anything that I'm more proud of, that we put our money where our mouth is to help people in need, to help other workers. And we refused as a labor movement in this, process, in this province to play into the politics of division and divide our Canadian workers, people who have been here for generations, from the workers who are coming uh, through programs like the Temporary Farm Worker Program. It's one of the proudest things that I can point to, and it's one of the things that I think sets our labor movement apart. We are on your side. So that, that brings us to today. And I'm proud of the work that we've done together as a labor movement and in cooperation with groups like Migrante. And I'm here to commit that we will continue to that, that work for as long as it takes. But on, on one hand, I'm proud of what we've done. On the other hand, I'm mortified because it's been 15 years and we're still having the same conversation. 15 years and we thought it was just a conservative government that was the problem. And we, we were hopeful when the Harper government was defeated and we heard promises from the Trudeau government. But I'm here today, we are here today because those promises have so far been unfulfilled. And if anything, the situation has gotten worse because not only do we have exploitable workers who are brought through, uh, brought into the country through programs like the Temporary Farm Worker Program, the International Mobility Program, the International Students Program. We have more precariously employed migrant workers in this country now than we've ever had. In fact, I, I'm, I hate to admit this, but we have to face this reality. Canada is rapidly becoming not a country that was that's being built by immigration, but rather a country that's being built by exploitative guest worker programs. It was not acceptable when this was being done by the Harper government, and it is not acceptable now by, when it's being done by a liberal government. So I'm just gonna wrap up with a commitment to you, okay? Commitment to you on by, behalf of myself as the pre president of the Federation of Labor. I'm also joined by our other elected officer, uh, Karen Capri, our secretary treasurer. This is a top priority for the labor movement in Alberta. So my commitment to you is that we will continue to push for real pathways to permanent residency for every single migrant worker in this country. And I'm proud to say that I, I was one of the many people who wrote letters on Danio's behalf to help him get the, the pathway. But that's not good enough. We can't do it just for individuals. This has to be structural, it has to be systematic, okay? so. Parliament is opening soon. That's why we're meeting today. I'm gonna to be meeting with Randy Boissonneau who now has an immigration file. He's the, 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 M, the MP for this region. He's a member of the cabinet. And I'm gonna be meeting him with him uh, within the next week. And I'm gonna be carrying the message from this group to his office and to parliament that on behalf of workers in this province, we demand regularization now on behalf of migrant workers, but also on behalf of every worker in this province and in this country. We will continue to have your back. Thank you in solidarity.